All right, uh, JF Bebo back again for uh, section four of the Loki costume. The pièce de résistance, of course, the first thing you see when you look at me from any angle and the last thing uh, you see as I leave your dreams. Where did that come from? Um, anyway, the coat, Loki's coat. It's actually rather uncomfortable to present it like that because this is heavy. This is incredibly heavy. Other parts of the costumes uh, that I've already showed have been somewhat, uh, uh, somewhat uh, important in the weight department as well, but none more so than the darn coat here. So uh, let's talk about it in more details. I have no idea if I can mention every detail in a single episode, and if I do cut it into several, where will I be cutting it? Ah, I don't know. let's just figure this out. All right, let me lay this, lay this down on the ground, and show you the details. All right, where, where to begin? <laughs> really. <laughs> Where should I begin? Well, um, let's actually go back to my progress pictures. This will be a boon to help you understand how this came together. Here are all the pieces, all the pieces of specifically the black, the black vinyl, black vinyl here, which, uh, which you can see down the front, all the way down to the front and around the back. It's all the same black vinyl that we had under the arm of the uh, of the tunic and uh, and the collar the collar of the tunic so very uh, very pliant very thin black vinyl easy to work with not easy or rather impossible to sew through and that is why all of the black pieces that are connected to to one another or connected to other pieces of, of vinyl are held together with our good friend the shoe glue uh, yes and it works quite well uh, let's see so um, yeah well all those pieces uh, not only you, you you can see them all all the pieces there's the collar the the, the back on all, all, all the side but the way that I laid them on the ground there this is how they mesh into each other to form the end result here so there's really not a whole lot to say other than just cut them like that make them the right size for you and attach them to uh, together <laughs> but <laughs> obviously there's a whole lot more to it well you need you need lining of course the lining really has similar shapes it's really the same shapes look at that we saw that in black uh, vinyl on my other picture and all of that so yes yeah, so you essentially need uh, the the same thing all right but of course as you glue everything together you need to leave some uh, some areas unglued because of the shoulder pads just try to flip it around there oh man what a beast there you go uh, the shoulder pads is a single is all a single piece uh, there you, you you can see it here uh, as I as I just cut it so this is all a single piece and so it ra uh, it wraps over the shoulders comes down the back and through through the uh, the uh, the coat so as uh, as you glue as you glue your pieces together right here see this is a seam this is a seam glued together well obviously the seam stops here and uh, you need to actually run the uh, the shoulder pad uh, the shoulder pad uh, through it uh, while we're on the shoulder pad let's talk about it we've got obviously this is really where the uh, patterned light brown vinyl is the star and as I believe I mentioned before it is quite robust but not nearly robust enough to look at that. Look at how stiff this is. It, it, it just stands on its own. So obviously there's more than just that vinyl. There is another layer of, I think the same vinyl here on the other side. It's just, you know, it, it's black on the underside. So uh, th that's why you don't see the same brown here as you see here. Um, and I do like that it's black on the inside. I think it, 
if for some reason anybody sees the inside, it'll, they'll see black, and I think that's a nice touch. But not only that, there's also, can you see it? I don't think you can, but there's some interfacing. There's some really nice thick interfacing uh, between the two layers, so that really helps it uh, to uh, stiffen. And then more of the same, the same nice pliable uh, black vinyl is on the trim. On the trim there, all over, all around, also held together with, uh, with shoe, shoe glue. Uh, Alright, um, let's... Uh, okay, well, I want to I wanna mention something about, about the shoulder pads before I move on. Uh, they used to be sewn sewn directly to the front of the jacket, sewn here and I believe also all the way up here. Uh, no longer. No longer now I've got, I've got snaps now. Now I've got snaps, one here and one here at the very, very, very tip. Is that it? Just two? Yeah, just two. Uh, well, two, two on one side and obviously two on the other side. Uh, why do I have snaps? Because uh, the shoulder, the entire shoulder thing is now removable. I can just snap off, snap off, and then uh, squeeze it through the uh, the crack in the back all the way up. And then just re re remove it. Remove it entirely. Why is that important? Remember how I told you in my, in my intro video when I, I, I had the costume on, that uh, I didn't make the helmet, nor did I make the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the staff yet. Because in order to make those pieces, I would need to make the entire costume... Uh, com um, I would need to, to make the entire uh, correct version of the outfit that he wears when he has the helmet and the staff. So it's not just a matter of adding the staff and helmet, you need to make the rest of the costume completely accurate. And uh, when he has the helmet and the staff, he no longer has that. He no longer has the shoulder staff. So that's why they needed to be removable. Uh, that's why I, I, I undid the, uh, the stitch when I decided to make it potentially compatible with the battle version. So in the future, uh, all I have to do uh, is, well, a whole bunch of work. <laughs> it's that simple. All I have to do is just, you know, put in tons more hours than I've already uh, put in in, in this, in this uh, huge project here uh, in order to add extra pieces that we'll talk about later um, to, to, uh, to, to, to transform it or to transform this costume into the battle version. So add a bunch of stuff but also remove this. So that's why it's removable. Um, and if you would like that kind of flexibility yourself, you might want to do the same. Um, okay, now, uh, sure, let's talk about that. You can see my seams, see my seams, yes, uh, my, my seams here uh, are, um, are accentuated with little, um, I don't know what I should call them, little cords? Little cords, little cords that I just glued on. Without these cords, these seams would just not pop out. You, you, you just wouldn't see them enough for my taste. So there you go. The little cord all the way here down to the... I was going to say that... I, I was about to call that the cervix. Let's just forget that this happened. Uh, to, you know, this, that, that the, the small of the back. That's a bit more polite. There you go. Um, and more here. Looks like I need a bit more glue here. Look at that. Uh, so there you go. Uh, that's a detail. And uh, all right. The coat remained wide open here for quite a while. That flap was completely open. And of course, on the other side too. Why? Because I had to apply those darn little doodly dads all the way up here starting under the arm and all the way down here I had to apply them before I glued the uh, the, uh, the flap on and thus shutting the coat, making the coat into a single uh, piece that just held itself. Same thing here, I had to apply the little doodly dads all the way around that black piece before I applied it to the tails. We haven't even talked about the tails yet. Uh, and we've already begun brushing the topic of these little doodly dads. 
So yes, so make, the, make sure that you remember those. Uh, apply, glue everything in order. Don't glue things too fast. Remember that you have to apply those along the edges of those pieces. Um, gee, what? What to do next? Uh, this is good. This is good. We're going some, uh, doing some great progress here. Okay. Well, while it's on on its on its belly here, and I've got I've got the tails very visible here. Let's talk about the tails. The tails are once again that brown, uh, light brown patterned vinyl. Same as the same as the shoulder pads. We've got more of it here. So yes, uh, we've seen it before, it in small doses, now it's all over the place, on the scope shoulders and all the way around the butt. Uh, well, the the the, uh, the tails were, I guess, not that difficult. Just big long piece, make sure it's the right length, lined with green on the other side, and oh look, more of that mesh, that little meshy material there. Is it one layer or two here? I don't recall. And I don't think it matters. Anyways, uh, it looks nice, and it's line uh, the the, uh, the the lining also has it. It's lined up perfectly well. So yeah, yeah, see they line up perfectly. And not only that, but look, the shape of the tails make this. See, starts low, goes up, goes back down, goes straight across, straight across, back up. And back down, this is the foot of my uh, tripod. Uh, hello, tripod, you are in the way. But uh, let's let's be honest, let's blame the coat. You're, the coat is the one that's much too big. Um, so there we go, what else uh, should we say about that? I was gonna save, uh, talk about the uh, the doodly dads uh, for, for last because it's obviously the, uh, the biggest Beast, uh, the biggest burden of the entire costume altogether. But you know, I've already mentioned them up there, and look, they're right here. They're in our face now. So let's let's go ahead and talk about about them. Um, well, there isn't a whole lot to, to to say about them, really. It's just hours and hours of and hours of work. Every one of those zipper tops I've already mentioned in a previous episode that these are zipper tops. Uh, every single one uh, is like a little U here. You just Put it on, take some pliers, crunch it real tight, real hard, move on to the next one. That's it. Couldn't be simpler. It's just that they are literally hundreds of them. I ordered a stack of, I do believe, 2,000, and I've got um, maybe 400 left. So, oh, it's been a while, my numbers might be off there, but anyways, it's, it's, in, it's, well, it's well over a thousand. You, you need to make sure to order at least 1,500. Uh, they, uh, they come in bulk, uh, I can share with you, anyone who's interested, I can share with you where I got mine. Of course, I got mine from uh, a Canadian distributor, it was uh, nice and cheap uh, on shipping. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyway, uh, well, uh, fun fact, my first um, batch uh, was, um, it, w it was called Antique Brass. The color was Antique Brass. I did not want something, wow, shiny in your face, look at me, because, well, that's just not the right look. Uh, it needed to be, to, to look a bit more, well, just like the armor, like old and crusty and... Uh, uh, and it was too dark. It was much too dark. It was, uh, it was, it was, it was like, like, like that, you know, like, um, so yeah, not good. Um, I send them back, send them back and I just, you know, let's, never mind. I'll just get the gold. I'll just, I'll, I'll bite the bullet. I'll just get the gold. I was afraid it would be too much gold, too shiny. It's, it's, I, I like it. There's nothing wrong with this. And actually the more I wear the costume, the more I, I, I rub it against things, chairs, people, what have you, and uh, the more uh, it scuffs these little pieces of metal. And hey, the more I wear it, the neater it looks. <laughs> the more worn my little pieces of metal end up looking. So yeah, this is one case of wear and tear actually working, working in your favor. All right, so uh, this is looking good. Uh, mentioned all of that, all of this, all of that. What else can I say about the back before I flip it back? Oh, oh look at that. Little uh, little triangles. Uh, 
uh, this, uh, the, there's no way I could order something to just snap on here, not like these little, uh, these little zip zipper tops. So, just have to make my own. Wonderflex, once again, Wonderflex, and no, it does not snap uh, through on the, on the other side, it's just glued on. This is the one area where I was afraid that this glue just wouldn't be good enough. Perish the, th perish the thought. Uh, it's, it, it's been perfectly fine. It has never needed any uh, touch-ups, I do believe. So uh, there you go. Little triangles, uh, gold paint, shoe, uh, shoe glue, and we, there we go. Little triangles. Uh, all right. Let's, let's do it. Let's talk about uh, these straps. The whole mess with the straps. Um, now that I've got the bag here. Well, the strap. The strap is connected to this clasp here. The clasp, we'll talk about it in the details, uh, maybe in... Uh, how about that? Uh, let's finish talking about the coat and we'll talk about, and, uh, about the armor, which is this and that in a separate episode. Sounds like a good deal? All right. Uh, yeah, so the clasp is here. It is attached to this uh, this belt. The belt is real leather, by the way, um, and it, it is scored with uh, a, a tool. A tool that you know you, you can adjust the width of the tool, and then you just run it against the edge. It makes a nice, very well defined line. So yes, I I scored the lines myself, and yes. This belt is much narrower than this one. This is not the same. Running through the shoulder pad here, the shoulder armor, this is not the same. I can... can I? I can show you the inside. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a mess there. Anyway, um, actually, yes, I will show you the inside uh, in my next episode because it snaps on and off. I've, I've, I've also got snaps. Um, so yes, uh, this is not the same strap. And here on the, on the inside, more snaps, so I can just snap this on and off if I ever want to. So yes, the strap run, uh, starts at the clasp, runs through the, uh, the shoulder pad, out on the other side, and then across my back, across my back, and then through a hole. So there's a hole for the shoulder, uh, for the shoulder pads, there's another hole for the belt. The belt is now on the inside. See, it's completely on the inside of the coat, and uh, it uh, comes out. It comes out the side. Uh, let me pause and flip this. Flip this baby back around. Uh, all right. So yes, you could see. Uh, you can see the uh, the clasp here, the shoulder pad. We just saw that it uh, runs through, runs down the back, and look at. There, there it is. It pokes through the back and now it is on the inside. Agreed? It's on the inside of the coat. And uh, there's my back and uh, my, my hip. Oops, sorry. Uh, bad framing here. I was showing you there. Uh, there's my lower back. There's my, my hip. It goes around my hip. And uh, then uh, it, it comes back up comes back up and now I want you to remember because I'm not taking it out again I want you to remember the uh, the bodice the bodice had this slit this hole well this is this goes behind the bodice that's a rectangular part at the bottom of the, of the bodice and it slips through the hole it slips through the hole and now it is now this part is on top of the bodice this part is behind the bodice that flap the flap of the bodice so now this is on top of the bodice and it runs through a set of of bells that we have not seen yet there they are and finally after it's done that it will connect back to, connect back with the clasp there you go on the other side i i built this little uh, this little uh, uh, this little uh, d d d hole, let's just say, yeah, uh, synonyms, thesaurus, yes, I are a writer, for real. Um, uh, and this runs through the hole and snaps onto the other snaps. And there we go, the cycle is now complete. It's kind of like this, running over my shoulder, down my back, through my back, around my hip, through the slit of the, uh, of the bodice, and back on the clasp. So, the thing is, 
I can't take off the coat. I cannot take off the coat. And this is how insane the Marvel costume designers are. Uh, may they perish in the deepest levels of hell. Uh, this is the way they made it, and this is the way I made it, because they made it, and I have no choice, because they made it, and, and, and when you make it, you have to make it the way they made it, because they made it. Uh, since this, this runs through the bodice, let's say that I slip the coat off my shoulders completely. So, yay, naked time, I, I, I just flop the coat off my shoulders, I let it fall to the ground. It will not. It will not fall to the ground. It's still attached to the bodice. This is going through the bodice. So it, it, it just, it, it won't, it won't come off. The only way for me to take off that coat is to unsnap this, run it out of the hole here, run it out of the belt that we haven't seen yet, uh, and then out of the slit in the bodice, and then let it run down, down, drag on the ground, and then I can slip off the coat. It's that crazy. And that isn't even quite true either. Because let's talk about those belts. There we go. A whole set of belts. Uh, Loki has this, uh, this bandolier belt uh, running, r running from one shoulder to one hip. But he's got more. He's got uh, these belts also running uh, per uh, running per per perpendicularly, sorry, to uh, to that whole system. All right, let's see if I can. Uh, you know what? I think I'll I'll inst I'll install them all. See, uh, this is a uh, this is one of the very 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 first fixes uh, that I did uh, that I made when I after I first wore the costume. I added these snaps here. They snap uh, to the master belt. And after I've installed everything, I'll show you what it does. All right, I'm gonna pause. So there we go. Uh, I want you to pretend that uh, my my entire uh, uh, midsection is th through here. There are my legs are running through the loop created by these belts here. Uh, and there you, there you see the master belt going around, like I told you. Pretend in here it passes through the slit of the bodice. And um, oh, there you go. There's a, there's a belt loop, an actual belt loop. See, there's, there's, there's the actual little pin of the belt loop, which is not used, not used at all. I wish I could make the belt uh, go through here and then back through the, 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 the other side. That's the way belts work, isn't it? But I can't because that's obviously not what we see in, on the costume design. The belt runs through the bottom and then just it, it, it just runs over the top and not through the top. That is exactly how it is supposed to look like. So I'm I, I'm I'm trapped. I'm, I'm a slave to the the crazy design of Marvel. Thank you very much, MCU. Uh, but hey, it works. Uh, but there is also a hidden little number. There is a snap that I added here. Uh, that's also a very early fix that I did. There's a snap here, and the other snap is where is it? Oh, it's, it's all the way up here. <laughs> uh, there you go. So this is supposed to uh, to be much higher. There we go. This is supposed to be much higher, and uh, there we go. So the uh, the bell, the be uh, the master belt snaps on to uh, the little perpendicular belt so that everything stays nice and in place, it doesn't slip up and down, which is a problem that I used to have. Uh, yeah, so we have that, and like I told you, these guys, these guys on the side. Without these guys, see, see the belt, the belt, the belt, the, per the thin, as you can say, you, you can tell that they're thinner, the thinner perpendicular belts are supposed to hang like this. They're supposed to come down like this, a downward angle like this, and an upward angle like this going over my hip. So under my hip here and over my other hip here. Without these snaps, it didn't do that. It just, it just hung below both of my hips. And therefore this, this here, which, which wraps around my body, it, it slipped well below my buttocks. Uh, incredibly uncomfortable. I could feel them or uh, under my butt as I walked. So this, so this just dragged 
like this downward, uh, well below both of my hips. Everything was down. It was no, not good. The angle was off. It was like like this. Instead, now it's perfectly like this. Upward here, downward here, all thanks to these little snaps. So these snaps, it's, it's, it's perhaps the best fix that I did across the entire costume after my first time wearing it. Uh, yeah, no, most definitely. This little one here as well was a very good addition. So yes, the, uh, the straps, the belts, nightmare. But there it is, thanks to your local Loki you've got a way out. And a little side note uh, recorded after the fact, that is why it's even more complicated than you might have thought uh, to uh, remove uh, the coat. I have to not only unsnap the uh, master belt here and slip it out of the buckle um, uh, and, and then work it out of the slit in the, uh, in the bodice, if I do just that, that's still not enough. The, per the perpendicular buckles are still around my waist they're still they still prevent me from uh, taking off the 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 coat so I, I I either have to uh, to pull my legs out of this big loop one by one or unsnap them here uh, at uh, at my uh, at my hip so yes if I do that then I can take off the coat uh, so yes it's not uh, it's not something easily done now back to my regular recording uh, how about that? How about we talk about the lapels? The lapels, they are, make no mistake, they are asymmetrical. Yes, indeed, the rest of the outfit, uh, as if it, was, it weren't asymmetrical enough for you, well, the lapels are also asymmetrical. One is just, you know, the... Just, well, why do I talk about it? Let's just look at it. There we go. There, there, there it is. There it is. It's that shape and back here. The other one is just much narrower and it just ends in a uh, in a in a point here. This is just uh, and um, I sewed them permanently here, a little dart, I believe you call them. Little dart here, little dart here. At first there was one here, uh, down here as well, um, but uh, eh, don't need it. it. It just hangs perfectly the way it's supposed to. And also the fact that there isn't a dart here anymore uh, means that I can snap this on and off with much greater ease. And a, uh, I do believe that we can we, we can close on that unless I forgot something. Of course I did. I for, of course I forgot something. You cannot make a cosplay without pockets. You cannot. You think you can, but you cannot. You must put pockets. I don't care what you wear, what you don't wear, I don't care if you're half naked, you find a way. If life can find a way, as Jurassic Park told us, pockets will find a way. And there they are. There's my pockets, this is the, the, this is the one area across the, as thick, as multi-layered and complex as this costume is, couldn't really find anywhere else. Thought man, the bodice and the, 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 all the all the way down the tunic, well, but I can't access the tunic. Tunic is is uh, buried under layers and layers of cloth and vinyl. All that, well, well, that, well, well, that, that the sleeves, the, the shoulder pads. That's crazy. So there you go. The um, the outermost uh, tails here are wide, so it's perfect place to hide some pockets. Uh, I was about to mention to talk about the collar, and I, I, yes, I do believe that that we, that we can wrap this episode on on the collar. Uh, just want to mention, yeah, I mean, I've already shown you the pieces that make up the collar, though there's really no need to go into details, but do not forget to stiffen your collar. Do whatever you must to help it stand up, straight up. I neglected to do that. I thought that the, uh, that just the general shape of it, that the little doodliness, and uh, what, I don't know what I was thinking, but I thought that it would just hold up by itself. It's true, without the little doodly thingies, uh, it did. It uh, stood straight up, perfectly fine. But these little guys are very heavy. They are the reason that the coat is so heavy. Incredibly heavy. A single one of these is, you know, negligible in weight, but, you know, add uh, 1,500 of them, and, yeah, uh, it's like 
Thor's hammer. It feels like I'm wearing it. Um, so, uh, yes, the collar that now was, was not nearly as stiff as I wanted. And it was too late. It was all nice and done and shut. So I had to cut open that seam, work in a piece of interfacing with great care, punching my fingers through here. Still not good enough. So I once again had to open this up and work in a wire. I've got now a wire. A wire going all the way down the lapels, all the way on down to here. All the way down to here. And of course, I curved the loop of the wire and then wrapped it around itself so that it wouldn't uh, be sh a sharp a sharp edge piece of pointy piece of metal that, that would eventually poke a hole through my my coat so I, I yeah I, I twisted it I made it into a nice curve uh, yeah so I've got a wire running down the lapels all the way up the collar and around and the other side please think about that before you close the whole gimmick here do not end up wasting time and try to f find a solution after the fact like I did so yeah don't do don't be like Loki, if you are going to be like Loki, because that makes a lot of sense. All right, uh, I might have forgotten something. Uh, if so, I will amend this video. But uh, yeah, I think that's it for the coat. Another episode on the armor. See you next time. Loki says, kneel and subscribe. Hey, guess what I did? I did forget something, which I remembered as I was getting ready for the next episode. See, I uh, unsnapped the shoulder uh, armor, and that reminded me that there's something underneath it, which is usually uh, hidden. But look, there's another one on the other side here. We've got these little green pieces of fabric poking through the uh, the code so yes if we go back to my uh, my vinyl pieces they're fully laid out uh, the shoulder pieces there some of them on some length are not meant to be glued together all the way you're supposed to see a bit of the lining poke through not only poke through but it's supposed also to it's supposed to bunch up bunch up and make these um these out uh, little little love handles there that, that are just poking through the uh, the shoulders. Why? Again, Marvel. Just Marvel cinematic universe insanity. Uh, yes, Loki has these two little things uh, poking uh, of uh, these these two little green patches of lining poking through the black vinyl of his shoulders. Well, he he has two. Only one is visible. Obviously, the other one is hidden. But hey, there we go. There it is. I made both of them, even though one is hidden. So uh, there you go. Now I do believe that we are done with the coat and I'm going to uh, stop this now and talk about the armor. See you very, from my point of view, see you very soon. From your point of view, see you whenever I manage to post the next episode. Bye-bye.